Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mac Flash 5, the show where we like to list our top five favorite movies fitting a certain topic. My name is Matt. I'm here with Scott, and we are here with AB. Gentlemen, how are you? Solid. Good, pal. Good. How you doing? I'm feeling good. Yeah. Got your Oreos? (laughs) Yeah. Show them off. (laughs) Very nice. You look damn good. I'll tell you we'll, guys the uh, we'll see. long we'll wait boring to... story of how I found this tracksuit off screen. We'll, we'll wait to see how you eat your Oreos to, uh, to make uh, some bad <laughs> fun. I'll, if I like your movie, I'll eat the Oreo. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> Very nice. Um, today, we are talking about our top five favorite gambling movies. Finally. Um, Gambler. Yes. And... Exact and in our last episode, I mentioned how I was happy that we we're going to be doing now rather than having done it like six months ago, mm-hmm. because I didn't have this outfit six months ago. <laughs> oh, cool! That's perfect. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so to remind everybody how the show works, after we decide on a topic, which uh, today is gambling movies, we go our separate ways and come up with a list of our top five favorite movies we then return here and we are going to talk about those movies three of which we'll talk about in depth and we will each have two honorable mentions scott is going to kick us off okay well guys i love come on down very nice (laughs) put a little bit of effort into this one um this is great a lot of movies a lot of great movies they've been making gambling movies since they're the invention of film and you can go back 70 years which i'm sure we will you can go back 30 years and even as far as 10 and there's classics all along the way and uh my list is pretty modern um for the most part um my number three is is very recent film it's a movie that came out in 2017 and it's a movie that the story was floated around and was picked up magazine outlets and things. And, oh, this is really interesting. And the writer, director thought so the same and adapted it from the main character's tell-all memoir of her time running uh, a high-stakes celebrity poker game. So yeah. my number three is is Molly's Game. And, and the director, writer, director of this film is, is one of my favorites, Aaron Sorkin, in his directorial debut. And... Uh, Molly, like, again, I didn't want to get too modern, but I just couldn't lie to myself just based on the enjoyability and uh, how much I I like this movie itself. So Jessica Chastain plays Molly Bloom, who's a, a failed Olympian uh, trying out for the 2002 Salt Lake City Olympics as a downhill skier. A horrible injury um, happens and she doesn't know what to do. So she starts working her way up from little, you know, rinky dink poker games, attracting clientele and then parlaying that into a large empire and and in it she uh she is arrested and charged with uh you know crimes and running an illegal gambling ring and uh, she has to get idris elba who plays this very high profile attorney to uh to represent her in it so it's equal parts gambling equal parts um you know a law film a procedural in that way and again they come together and she's telling the story and it's going back and it's done in a very sorkin-esque way where you know a lot of the stuff is talking about it and he's talking about her book that she's already written while it's going on here too so there's a lot of plate spinning kevin costner plays her father who's a very 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 hard ass you know um he kind of raised his his kids to be type one alphas and that's very much where chastain um chastain inherits it from and they have some some very good father daughter stuff too especially culminating at the end of the movie too where you know she's got some brothers and some brothers that play in the NFL and she never thought that her dad showed her as much affection and, you know, by doing this and she had earned it and, and, you know, it's, it's a father daughter movie in that regard. Uh, Also great role by Michael Sarah, Michael Sarah playing an unnamed Hollywood actor. We, he's called player (laughs) X. If you've read the book, if you know anything, he's maybe, or maybe not, he is. Toby Maguire, who who antagonized <laughs> Molly Bloom and plays a lot of poker and uh, and was kind of a shithead to this. But nothing else to really say about Molly's game aside from how cool it makes gambling. Like, mm-hmm. again, there's always, you know, gambling movies are great because they can mirror 
Uh, there's a built-in character arc, you know, the highs, highs, and it's good. And then the lows, lows, and it's bad. And then they ultimately come back. And that's much like gambling. That's throughout all five of my films, the highs and the lows. And it's, it's kind of baked into the premise there. Molly's blooms are very high and very lavish. And you get to see the very rich side when she's, you know, renting out, you know, million dollar a night hotel rooms and inviting clientele. And you get to see them up and down and things in that regard. And, and like I said, and ultimately it's coming back to the, uh, the law uh, trial at the end of the movie. And, and like I said, just everyone spewing Sorkin lines and Sorkin being on and in his directorial debut. I knew I, I had to put it on my list somewhere. So I wanted to get my number three is the, the very recent but still uh, classic gambling movie, Molly's Game. Very nice. I like this movie. Yeah. Um, I was so excited to go see it because I loved Sorkin's other written work especially uh, A Few Good Men, uh, awesome trial movie, and I like gambling movies, so this fit right uh, in the Venn diagram of of uh, my favorite things. That movies. Uh, well, and then you throw into the mix that Jessica Chastain looks a yeah, million, she's incredible like a million bucks. And, and that's the thing, too. I mean, she's hamming up the sexuality because obviously she's, you know, there's there's layers to this movie, too. Sure. She's, she's a woman in the high-stakes world of gambling. Yeah. Uh, I think all our movies predominantly have male characters. I mean, that's not, maybe that's a big cliche, but as far as my movies about gambling, they're all, they're all white males. Mm -hmm. And, and if you go through a list of a hundred of the best gambling movies, I think they all are white males. So she's coming into that and being the top dog where no one can screw her over and she's got to run money and she's got to get all this. And so she does it by tapping into a bit of sexuality as well, too. You see the Chris O'Dowd scene where he becomes obsessed with her and, yeah, and right. falls in love with her. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that's got to have been at that time, you know, a hundred men for Molly Bloom. Of course. Cool. Uh, all right. Uh, my number three is a movie that I used to watch pretty much every spring for a long, long time. Uh, and along with a couple other movies, but it was a movie that was lumped in with uh, a few of my favorites leading up into the baseball season, and that is 1988's Eight cool. Men Out from yeah. John Sales. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's all about the obviously about the 1919 World Series, uh, with the Black Sox, Black, so Black Sox scandal, um, uh, one of the biggest uh scandals in sports history, obviously. Uh, and uh, how uh, a few uh, players, eight, eight in fact, uh, uh, through the World Series. Uh, and it just kind of shows the behind the scenes on how that transpired. And what I th uh, really like about this movie is that you get a, uh, you kind of get a sympathy for a lot of these guys. Like they, they obviously, uh, Kaminsky was uh, notoriously cheap and, you know, cheated them out of bonuses, uh, vastly underpaid them, you know, despite making, you know, uh, a ton of money on, on the team. Uh, he shortchanged them. And, you know, a lot of these guys are family men, which they show in the movie. Um, and, you know, it, it shows, it shows a, a lot of sympathy for a lot of these guys. They're, you know, you, you have your uh, Michael Rooker at the heart of it. And he's, you know, Michael Rooker obviously is good at playing a scumbag. So he's kind of one of the ones you're, you know, not rooting for, but then you have, you know, uh, uh, you, you have your John Cusacks, you have your DB Sweeney's, you have your, uh, that's what uh, I really got in. Cause I, I watched D that. And, and he's the, he, Eddie, as Eddie, he is the one guy that you sympathize most for it yeah, because he's an he's aging, like he's an aging baseball player. He's, you know, got a, you know, he has a few more seasons left him. He, they constantly show his wife and his two kids, uh, he, he, everybody's always surprised when they find out that he's on the take because of what a great guy he is. Uh, and you know, you, you feel sympathy for this guy who, you know, um, he, and they, they have a great scene too, where he comes into the office and, com uh, confronts Kaminsky and says, you know, you said, if I won 30 games, uh, that I would get my bonus. And he said, "Well, you only won twenty nine. And he said, "Well, you benched me for two two weeks. I had five when I had five starts." And he said, "I probably would have won at least two of those." So he's like, "Well, sorry, you know, want want want." <laughs> and it's like when you think about that, like you won twenty nine baseball games. If a player wins over twenty, 
right now in modern. Not even now, man. Grinky, Grubby Way Ray, I think won the second at like 14. Grinky won with like a losing record. So yeah, I like 12. I, I mean, like, yeah, exactly. So, like, like winning 29 baseball games is insane. So, like, this, this is one of the greatest baseball teams to ever take uh, the field. And, you know, they basically were getting paid peanuts uh, to play the game. So, you, you have a lot of sympathy for these guys going into it. But also, there's the thing that nobody likes a cheater. And so, you have the, the, a lot of great scenes where these you see the guys... Uh, they're conflicted, you know, guys like John Cusack, who, uh, who plays um, Hap, and he, or no, Buck, so Buck Weaver, and uh, you, you see he's conflicted because <laughs> he wants to win. He has that drive. He loves baseball, and he has a lot of great scenes, too, and some of them are kind of cheesy with the kids. Uh, the movie starts off with, you know, a bunch of kids running into the baseball uh running into the uh, one of the games and they're excited and they love baseball and they have interactions with buck on the street and you know uh they just have a love for the game and buck himself has a love for the game and you know you know you see these guys love and they they they're so conflicted uh that they don't want to lose even though you know you're getting paid to do it and then you know even um shoeless joe he, he he didn't he didn't take money he, and he didn't like I think he batted like over three hundred in the series. I think it was four. I think Field of Dreams, which I'm dying, like I mean that makes a perfect double feature. I think Field of Dreams says he batted like four thirty. Yeah, in the uh, like, World Series, and it's like, just like he, de- he definitely did not throw the World Series. Yeah. even though he was part of the scandal, he he definitely played better than anybody in the entire World Series. So like it's uh. Yeah, it, it's it's just a great film. It's a it's a great film that uh, you know it, even despite the 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 subject matter of you know the scandal and all that stuff, it still gets me excited about baseball itself. And you know, I I excite, I get excited about watching it and watching uh, you know that that conflict of because you could tell that these guys still love the game and they want they I, they want the win even despite being part of the scandal. But uh, yeah, that's definitely my number three. Amen. Out. All I know about the 1919 World Series is from dialogue from Godfather 2, <laughs> where Hyman Roth talks about that's that's the game that made him fall in love with baseball. And in a deleted scene, you see he named himself Hyman Roth after Arnold Rothstein, the Dean. gangster who yeah. helped fix the fix the game. Played by you, Michael Lerner, yeah, and and it, you, there's like there's a couple of a couple of great spots too. Um, uh, you got Christopher Lloyd, who's one of the guys who uh, initiates the whole uh, deal in the first place. He's one of the one of the guys. It's uh, him and um, uh, Richard Edson is the other guy. He's got the I don't like, remember the Lloyd. I haven't seen the movie in twenty years. But so yeah, I, uh... Christopher Lloyd and him and the the other guy who's an ex boxer. Um, are the guys who originally are sitting in the stands and they initiate the deal and they kind of get a a bum deal out of it too. They get kind of pushed out by the gangsters by, by Rothstein and his like minion guy. But um, yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a star studded cast. Like I am not doing it justice. And even like John sales himself, the director plays one of the main characters. He plays the uh, reporter. There's the young reporter and the, the old reporter that kind of, you know, uncover the scandal, and he's the younger guy. That's John Sales who directed you, it. You know what? You, this movie popped up in my consciousness this summer too. I thought because <laughs> there was a bar stool guy who got in a fight with John Cusack because Cusack was wearing a oh, white I saw that hat, and yeah. then the, but there's vid footage, and the guy's like, "Hey, Cusack," he's trying to like f him, and he's like, "Cusack, you're a Cubs fan. Why are you doing here wearing a White Sox hat?" And Cusack's like. I made a White Sox movie. Do you know yeah. that? And he starts like <laughs> rifling off like things. And then Cusack owns it. Cusack's like, Cusack's like, I got uh, dual or dual eligibility um, or whatever. Um, <laughs> what do you call when you're Canadian American? Citizenship. Dual citizenship. Yeah, he's like, I got dual citizenship, Cubs and Sox. Oh, and then you're like grilling, up, grilling them on stats. Yeah, too. and he's Especially like first base in 1971, like, and he's like this. Yeah. Golden Glove, and I'm just like, oh man, Cusack knows his Chicago baseball. And then yeah, when he's like, I made a White Sox movie. Do you know that? I'm pretty much that grants you like when you make a White Sox movie, you're allowed to be in the fandom. And he's great in it. Like I like John um, Cusack a lot, and he's probably my favorite person. Is in this that. like he's it's probably like his first grown up role too? Because you gotta yeah. think he would have been like three years off say anything, and then yeah. he comes in and he does this with Sheen too. I mean, Sheen. 
I mean, had platoon a few years before, but this is like their adult man roles. Sure. Well, he was a little bit off Wall Street too, but yeah. And, and she doesn't. She kind of takes the back seat. He doesn't. Yeah. He has a as he has a few like key moments, but like John Cusack is, I think, is at the center. She was just there. Guys, he's the biggest he's, baseball fan in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> cool. Matt, what you got for number three? My number three is a. Uh... Similar to ABs, and it's unconventional in, in as gambling movies are concerned. Not all of our movies will be featured in a casino. Um, <laughs> my number three is Pool Hall Junkies. Scott messaged me before this started and be like, I'll bet you any money. I almost, Hall junkies I almost doubled be on down right this. now and be like, Matt, what's your number three and why is it Pool Hall Junkies? <laughs> I will forever, if this show ends, I, I will forever regret not doing that right now. because oh This is the biggest Matt movie I've ever seen. And I saw this movie 25 years before I met you. But yes, right. tell me why Walken's monologue is great and why you can do <laughs> two shots before someone drinks a beer or drink, drink two beers before shots. Please continue. Right. Well, it involves it's a uh, written directed and stars uh mars callahan he he is here in the center with his hustler t-shirt um and it's pretty much a rounders ripoff he obviously went and saw rounders like i can make that using pool yeah because it's a similar story he uh he's a kid he's a great uh pool player as a kid and uh he's uh the uh, professional pool league wants to offer offer him a spot, but his uh, backer, played by Chaz Palmentary, uh, throws away his invitation and keeps him on, you know, in the underground hustling pool. He discovers this and quits uh, playing for a while, and he takes on a construction job, which he's no good at. He gets a call from his buddy, says, "You want a game?" He heads back down to the pool pool hall and falls right back into his old uh, rhythm of. Uh, just beating anybody in the room. Um, along with uh, uh, playing pool, it's also uh, some. It's a small time con man movie. Like Scott alluded to earlier, there's a great scene where um, what's his name? He's playing Christopher Pike. Oh, um, Anton Discovery? Mount. Anton yeah, okay. Mount is the guy in that scene, and he challenges a guy to. Uh, he says, I can drink both my uh, glasses of beer before you can fire your two shot glasses. And in that scene, he drinks one beer, tips his glass over the, one of the shot glasses, avoiding to losing the bet. It's full of pool and small time hustles like that. Mm -hmm. But money gets passed around everywhere in this movie, which makes it a gambling movie. It also stars Christopher Walken, like Scott said. In a terrific performance, Chaz Palminteri, Ricky Schroeder is in it, looking like yeah. Steve McQueen. Yeah. Um, Allison Eastwood is uh, Clint Eastwood's daughter. It also has Michael yeah. Rosenbaum from uh, he was Lex Luthor in Smallville. Yeah, Smallville, Anson yeah. Mount, like I said, he'll be playing Christopher Pike. Oh, and he's also in Hell on Wheels too. Yes, Anson which Mount, is yeah. where he's amazing. He's also yeah. in Crossroads, that Britney Spears movie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but this was a movie that when it came out, I'm pretty sure me and my friends were in a sports bar playing pool and the trailer hit the TV and we were just like, this is destiny. We didn't get to see it in theaters though. It took a while before we finally got to watch it. It was on DVD and it became a recurring all the time. Every time we were at uh, somebody's house for like spending the night, it's like, let's throw this on. Cause That's it's not, insane. it's not a long movie and uh, we could quote it. We'd watch them uh, try to, uh, imitate the uh trick shots they tr they pull off in the movie there's an amazing scene where christopher walken gets to uh perform a trick shot in one take mars callahan says well i'll show you how to do it and we'll rehearse and then we'll shoot the shot and christopher walken says no i maybe i get it on the first try so just shoot everything i do he plays it shoots it on the first makes it on the first shot and it's amazing because the uh the room that they're in erupts in like laughter and applause because it's their genuine reaction and uh he never got to make the shot again so if they didn't uh if they didn't shoot that rehearsal they never would have showed up um it's funny it's not a fantastic movie though there are so many things i don't want to say mm -hmm. wrong I mean, when did you see it last scott oh i saw it live like with my buddies so i would have been in like high school oh, okay i haven't seen it probably since like 2005 or six Every time yeah. I see it, 
every time I see it in the last year or so, at one point, uh, Johnny, played by Marston Callahan, breaks uh, breaks his wrist and he has to take a job as a RV salesman. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't even remember that. It's hilarious. Good for him. That's Which, cool, man. If anybody knows, that was Scott's profession for a, for a short time. I did it time. for a year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Pool Hall Junkie is my number three. Nice. I think, like like Scott said, I think I saw it uh, when it first dropped on DVD, and that was it. I watched. I think yeah. might have watched it with. We watched uh, this a lot though. Buddies. Like Dan's Dan's house, we put this on a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might. I, think I actually own it. Yeah, like, I actually own it. I don't know if the look. I feel like I might downstairs to somewhere. I I can see it. It's right there because I watched <laughs> it the other day. Great. All right. Cool. Okay, I'm really excited about this one. Oh, this boy. movie here, again, it's a modern one. It's from 2015. And as soon as I put it on, you're going to go, hell yeah, this is this is a very Scott Desmond's movie. Um, this movie was what is now my two. It was it was an honorable mention, and it didn't feel right, and it was off the list, and I really didn't want it. And then I rewatched it twice. I watched it like about a month ago, and then I rewatched it last week as well, too. And I'm just like, you know what? I had some problems with the finale that went away the second time I watched it and just genuinely, I watched the, the performances, the character development, the character arc. And while it's a copy homage ripoff, whatever of the superior California split, which is very good. I can't deny that. I like Mississippi grinds mm. more than that. And Mississippi California split is good. Hmm. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So, California Split, I wanted to watch. I, I, I wanted to put on my list. And I watched that after Mississippi Grind. Uh, and then I watched Mississippi Grind again. And I just, I can't deny how much I, I enjoy this film. And I remember from the first trailer I saw, I uh, at the end, and Reynolds looks so cool. Tweed jacket, collars up. He's like the coolest, like go with the wind, where it goes. He's, he's like incredible in this film he's dialed up to 11 it's a great use of ryan reynolds talents in film i like this this is actually 2016 i like this more than anything he does in deadpool or that that's just what people think ryan reynolds is i want more mississippi grind i want more buried i love that ben mendelson he's coming to his own here this is like you know right off he did animal kingdom did a few independent ones but he conveys like a perfect loser quality in this he's he plays jerry this obsessive gambler that that loses everything and ryan reynolds like i said is kind of like his manic pixie dream girl where he comes into his life and he's almost his good luck charm and then they decide to go down to mississippi playing the the, the dog tracks and the horse races and uh, casinos and poker games all the way through and and more or less this is kind of a movie where the real fortune is the friends we made along the way and it's kind of <laughs> him going back and reconnecting with his ex-wife and you know not before getting you know Ben Mendelsohn not before getting kicked out for trying to steal money because he knows where she hides it uh, but like I said the the first trailer I'd seen for this and it ends with a stinger where they're at the the horse track and Ron Reynolds wants to leave and Ben Mendelsohn's like Come on, if the next guy comes out of the bathroom, he's got glasses, we stay. If he's wearing glasses, we stay. <laughs> and then they look, and then the guy walks out, and he's like, oh, we stay. That's like, that is my movie. I got to see this movie. Um, I used to hate the end. I, I thought they won too much at the end. He, uh, this is a great movie. Go see it. Go see it. It's not about that. But, you know, I was just like, oh, I didn't need him to win. But rewatching it again and you see the friendship and you see how he gets hot and, you know, the tides kind of switch where Mendelssohn's in control and Reynolds is losing it towards the end of the movie as he's been cool and collected the whole time. And uh, and then at the end, they kind of switch a little bit and, you know, even almost in a Goodwill Hunting kind of sense where Mendelssohn kind of leaves, you know, leaves and uses Reynolds line almost Reynolds doesn't say son of a bitch stole my line but you could see that being in there where he says you know it's Machu Picchu time when it's finally time to get out of a situation and leave and go where the next game takes you and uh, you see it in that so like I said there are there are better movies um, than this California Split's great it's got I mean maybe we'll talk about it. it's got good performance in this but uh, for me and for what I want and when I want to see cool guys be cool and gambling in the end the last 20 minutes is so good <laughs> it's uh it's Mississippi grind so I am uh happy to put that at my number two awesome yeah I, I think I've seen it uh a while ago and and you're right it, it has a lot of parallels to 
California split just didn't know how it plays out. Um, yeah, it's it's great. And Ben Mendelsohn is always. I just think I like. Yeah, on, Mendelsohn is Jerry. Mendelsohn and is amazing. They're just like dialed up, and they're great. And then, like I said at the end, once you know they're gambling and they bet it all, and then you don't know, and then Ace of Spades kicks in the song, and you're just like, this movie is on another level. Like we're mm -hmm. going higher and higher, and it's just. I just ate it all up. I think the first time I watched it, I, I watched it at work when I worked at Blackburn. I watched it on a laptop and I know I paused a lot. I didn't get into the flow. And since then, obviously watching it more recently, uh, twice an entirety in one shot. And I, I just, like I said, once you get the actual flow of the film too, it's incredible. So it's one of the, the late, um, really under the radar, uh, you know, Anna Bodwin and Ryan Fleck who directed, they ended up going to Captain Marvel. They're not back for the sequel. There was a lot again, Marvel, you can't bring your independent cool shit here, get in our cookie cutter. <laughs> so they're not back for the sequel, but I am very interested to see what they do because going back to this, this is a <laughs> fantastic film. I wasn't, uh, when you popped the poster up there, I was fine. I was reminded of seeing that poster. And then to see that Ben Mendelsohn is in the movie and I've become like a fan of his okay. I, and I haven't seen that, but like since 2016 has popped up in like so many movies since big year, big year for, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna have to give that. Oh a watch man. Sure. Uh, probably around the same time as bloodline. That was one of the, well, that's, things that, like, that was he would have done bloodline. bloodline season one was like 16 or 17, 16, yeah. maybe you're right. And yeah. then, cause he, yeah, his first, I think this, he, I don't know, he did Australian bloodline. films like animal kingdom was Oh nine. Yeah. That's and, great. I just and saw him in uh, Kingdom of Heaven. Sure. So yeah. yeah. Part in that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so this is definitely a story. He's like full on lead, and he is Gil from The Simpsons to it. The old Gil's gotta get this winner here. And like, if you want to <laughs> see Reynolds do Gil from The Simpsons, it's this movie. But my God, guys, Reynolds is my God, my guy in this movie. All right, uh, so we're going to move on to my number two. My number two is a movie that I've seen, just seen recently. Uh, and um, I watched it just because I had to fill in uh, a director's a um, director's filmography that I wanted to see. And uh, so I was like, I watched it, and it was awesome. It was from 1996, Paul Thomas Anderson, Hard Eight. Uh, heart, so heart eight, uh, there's one, there's like 30 seconds of gambling, but please tell me <laughs> there's one Philip Seymour Hoffman scene of gambling, but and it, and, and it is fantastic. And well, and He's... it's not just that, and it's, but it's also about, uh, you know, Phil, uh, Philip Baker Hall taking, uh, John C. Riley under his wing and showing I guess him the opening scene, how to get a free hotel room. I yeah. just, it's so funny. You did this. I did, we did a PTA rewatch too. And I've never, uh, I don't, I've only known that this was not a, a, I didn't, I knew Boogie Nights is in his debut, but it's kind of like Eminem where it's like, oh, is Slim Shady LP his debut? No, he did Infinite, but nobody's listening to Infinite. That's mm -hmm. my whole thing until Hard Eight, until I saw it like two weeks ago as well. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, Philip Baker Hall um, finds John C. Riley outside of this diner, and John C. Riley looks so, like, basically like a homeless person. Uh, and he offers him to buy him a coffee and buy him a meal and so he brings him in and and at that point he kind of takes him under his wing and john, john c Riley is very hesitant at first to to uh, uh like what his motives are and it's it, john uh, phil baker hall is playing a guy named sydney uh and so he takes him under his wing and he brings him to the this casino and so it, it, there he shows him basically how to get a free room how to uh roll up a whole bunch of money and he's known in this casino like uh philip baker hall and uh the waitress played by gwyneth paltrow uh he you can tell he's a regular there uh she calls him the captain um and so the the uh, john uh, philip baker hall kind of builds this like father-son relationship with john c Riley, and so um through that there's a lot of drama that gets involved uh samuel L. jackson comes into the mix he's a friend of john c Riley's, and he's a little shady and I, i'm not i won't get spoil anything you know the third act of it is um uh, where you know stuff starts to unfold um oh, well i actually forgot to put the scene up but uh uh like scott said there's the scene with 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is Seymour <laughs> Hoffman. This is an all time heat playing, check. Where they're playing craps, and he it is just an all time scene for him. Like he is just dialed it up to eleven, uh, playing craps with with Philip Baker Hall, and you know, uh, just challenging challenging him, just egging him on, and it's it's just an amazing scene. And you know, I, I at that point, like you know, I've already seen a lot of PTA movies uh, before that, and. Philip, Philip C. Homer Hoffman's in a lot of them, but this is one of the, like you said, it's an all time scene where he comes in and just like just crushes it. He's got the mullet going and it's, it's fantastic. But uh, yeah, Heart Eight, uh, not one of my favorite PTAs, uh, but it, there's a lot of great stuff in there. There's a lot of great stuff to mine. And, you know, Philip Baker Hall, I think, is an, un, a highly underrated actor he's you know a you know classified as a character actor you don't see him a lot as a lead in a lot of different stuff so he's usually it's nice playing the him. police chief or something yeah of course and he's always amazing you and you know who he is right you've seen him it's you've seen him in literally hundreds of movies and every time you see him he's really good but he never gets that time to shine so i really appreciate this movie for just allowing him to show <clears throat> that he's got lead man chops that was the one thing that blew me away this movie, which I knew very little about it as well, too, when I watched. But it's Philip Baker Hall is unbelievable. Like, you're you're right. He plays and he's got secondary that, credits and a third lot act. of things. That third that act, third act he lays a, down the law. Awesome. He's unbelievable. He's, he's off the he, charts. As, Good. like, a reformed badass. And, that, and that's where it ties back to the Hoffman scene because you're like, Hoffman's just some shitty gambler who's messing with, like, he doesn't know what he's got. He's a, you know, you're like, oh, this old man, this old man. But this old man's like a stone cold killer back in his day, like yeah, yeah. a bad ass level ten dude that you yeah. don't expect because again he's such a such a nice guy. Fun fact about this movie too: Do you know it's a spiritual sequel, pseudo kinda of what movie? No. So Phil Baker Hall also play he plays Sydney in this movie. Also plays a character named Sydney in Midnight Run, oh, which yeah same name. Which it's never kind of it could be the same character. He's. Uh, He's the guy who um, who runs Jack Walsh's like uh, bounty firm. Who said he, he that was like his thing and kind of drifted onto this in the same way. You know that interesting. It could it could be like a continuation of the story. I, I listened to a Hard Eight podcast after that too, where they were talking about the connections and stuff. That's so, fun. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. I. I uh, I had another one at number two, and I kind of pulled an audible. So, Just give me a heads uh, up. Did you move it to one? Because it was no. it was Ghostbuster two, where he plays a police commissioner. That's why it reckon I recognized it right away during the uh, Ghostbusters rewatch before he seeing plays after, like, Phil Captain Deal in Rush Hour. So, like, oh, <laughs> That's more. another one. exactly. Yeah, yeah I mean, Argo. he's like literally you like man. This is like pops up. You're like you. He's one. He's one of those. I mean, he not I, like now people know he's Philip Baker Hall, but did like in as far as the thing is like he's one of the, that guys, right? He's always in, he always pops up in all these movies and he's always really good. He'll always be library detective bookman to me. <laughs> nice. That's from nice. Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. My number two um, is something it may not come as a surprise to you guys. We won't, uh, we talked about it yesterday in the car. My number two is Croupier. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <Talk about Nice. laughs> I've never even heard of this movie. Um, and you'd like it, Scott. And I yes. was hoping, I don't know when uh, AB, AB saw it and he mentioned it in our, uh, we were in the car together yesterday and I was trying to like keep a stone cold face about That's having funny. it on my list. And it wasn't until you asked me directly had I seen it, and I was like, "Yeah, I saw it." <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got a good poker face. Yeah, I didn't know you put it means... on. I just assumed. No, it's, like, it's... Oh. no, he's um, right. You'll you you will really like this movie, and you really like Clive Owen in this movie, Scott. But uh, I was hoping I I would be the one who bring it to AB's attention because he's a a Hoovian, and in this movie we have a uh, River Song from uh, 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 yes from she is uh, very much Doctor in this movie. Who, Alex Kingston. Yep. who is very much in this movie. And if you are a fan of Doctor Who and her work, I refuse to believe you hadn't seen it already, but for any who, anyone who likes her, check this one out. <laughs> now, Clive Owen is actually a novelist in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Jack. And, excuse me. 
and uh, he's he's got writer's block. He's over at his publisher's office, and his publisher wants a book about um, a soccer team, uh, a you know a team that's last place when the season starts and they win the championship. And he's like, yeah, okay. Uh, he goes home to try to start writing, and his dad gives him a call. He says, I know a guy at a casino, and they're looking for a dealer. Apparently, this is the job he had before when he was living in uh, South Africa. So he goes into the interview, and he gets the job. The guy who runs the casino get, lays down the uh, rules about uh, working there. It's like, one, don't become friends with the client, with the uh, customers. Two, don't have relations with the other dealers. Mm -hmm. uh, three, you can't gamble yourself. He breaks the first two rules for sure. And the other one, he uh, he keeps himself. He's not a gambler per se. It seems like he has a Wait, gambling. I, I was going to say he. It seems like he has a past. He seems like right, he, yeah, which you don't really know too much about. But it no. seems like he he has a gambling addiction. But his addiction is not trying to win money. His addiction is watching everybody else lose. Yeah, and that gives him that make that gives him the rush. So being part of the house and the house always wins. He yeah. gets to watch these people come to his table lose all of their money to him and walks away and they walk away miserable and he walks away. I've done my job. <laughs> and there, there's some great action too. Like the great, uh, like, uh, dealing action. Like, uh, I don't know oh, yeah. if it's, if like, it's, if it's actually him doing the tricks and stuff yeah. and, it, and it looks like it, a lot of the times it looks like it's, it's him doing the tricks, but, but it's, you know, it's his hands or whatever, but right. like him doing the car tricks and the, the deal stuff. And like, it looks really cool. Um, this was obviously, I don't want to say obviously, but his James Bond audition. <laughs> for sure. Uh, he's got the tuxedo. This came out in 1998, so Pierce Brosnan is still James Bond, but everyone's looking for who's next. And next, yeah. anyone who saw this probably said, oh, it's going to be him. Um, there's one of my favorite scenes in this movie, and it happens a lot in other gambling movies, is usually at the end of a card game, like, like well, probably talk about in rounders and in casino royale and in maverick it comes down to all of these players having amazing hands yeah and then the last it's person insane. is able to yeah i, I always it. like yeah. come on that never happens in any well, game ever he, him and alex kingston go to a party and uh they all decide they're going to play cards and he says i'm not going to play i'll deal the game and at the end of the at the end of the night he says okay last hand shuffles out all the cards and he predicts who uh who wants what he shuffles them all out, and then each one's like full house, straight flush, royal flush, or four of a kind. And so it makes sense in this movie because he stacked the deck. That's right. It's just for entertainment value. Um, while he's doing all of these things, he's mentally taking notes because at the end of the movie, he's got his idea for his book. He's done away with the soccer story. and He's going to write about his life as a croupier in a London ca casino. Really good. I saw it for the first time like two months ago, and it was going right on my list. Yeah, and and uh, for those who want to watch it, it is available on Netflix. Yeah, that's what uh, I, I yeah I did a search and I was like, oh, Check I'm gonna find this out, and it's on. Uh, it was on Netflix. So I was like, perfect. So, yeah, it's it's one that came up on all kinds of lists, and I had never heard of it, and. Uh, I was like, Clive Owen looks like a million bucks in this. I'm going to check this out. And then I, I didn't look at anything else going to it. So when Alex Kingston showed up, I was like, whoa, River Song. <laughs> and she showed up. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, no, it's, a, it's it's really good. It's And, it, and it's kind of weird because he starts off, he starts off with blonde hair, like dyed blonde hair. That's right. And so, and somebody make, kind of makes fun of him for it later on in the movie, but I, it kind of threw me for a loop because the the thumbnail is, or in the poster is him with, you know, the, with the like you said, that like the the Bond look, he has the yeah. Bond look in it. So like the ver first frame of the movie, right? He comes up and he's got this like dyed blonde hair. I was like, what is going on here? But uh, yeah, you find out what's going on, but it's, yeah, it's solid. It's a solid, solid. I movie. will certainly check it out. I promise. I'll be the only one and I'll give my thoughts back to both of you. Nice. Cool. All right. We are moving into slots. Honorable mentions. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so right now, this is where I rack my brain. I'm like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew this is a very valuable slot. There was like 25 movies competing for these two roles. And um, 
and I knew I was going to get a little modern on uh, my three and my two. So I went back to something. My childhood came out uh, late 90s uh, that I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put Vegas Vacation on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about I'm gonna it. I'm going to put Vegas Vacation on here. This movie gets roasted on Rotten Tomatoes. This movie's lovely. I was 10. Uh, Nick Papa Giorgio from Yuma changed my <laughs> life in the usual table, Mr. Papa Giorgio. No corrective lenses tonight. No, I do not require them. Uh, this movie's great. It's It showcases, again, just gambling addiction and Chevy and all that. And once you get older and understand Wayne Newton as an entity and a corporation, it's great, too. Your bodyguard, I take a bullet for you. And then my other uh, my other honorable mention, I uh, there's a lot, so many good movies out there. There's so, so, so many good movies out here. This movie caught me at a perfect time, came out mid-2000s. I was right in high school, same kind of thing. I, at a time, think I thought this was the... I'm like, movies will never get cooler. There will never be another cooler movie out there than Two for the Money. Oh <laughs> it's gosh. a movie about sports betting <laughs> and gambling, which uses insider terms over under, the spread, handicapping, parlaying, and a guy who gambles on sports regularly. Watch this movie. Watch this movie again. And I just go, oh, my God, this movie rules. This is, Matthew McConaughey is a sports gambler who works out, who drives cool cars. This, this is my movie. So uh, I wanted to shut that out. This movie would never show up on another list anywhere. So let's go. Vegas Vacation and two for the money. Nice. All right. My own mentions. Uh, obviously, Casino. Uh, one do Martin, I? Martin Scorsese. I'm like, I, I, don't, I was like, I was trying to rack my brain. I'm like, have I put a Martin Scorsese film on any of my lists <laughs> in the history of the show? And I was like, I don't know if I have. So I was like, I have to get wow. a casino on this list. And so, this is like at one point, like uh, my one. Robert De Niro, uh, you know, Ace, Ace Rothstein is looks like a million bucks in every scene that he's in. Uh, and, you know, we could go on and on about this thing, but I want to give a special shout out to my man, Don Rickles, who I love <laughs> as the pit boss, Billy. Uh, he, he Every time uh, Don Rickles comes on the screen, I love it. He's, he's just perfect for that role. Uh, love him. Uh, and my other one, I bumped down. Rounders, 1998, <laughs> directed by John Dahl. Matt, my honorable mentions include Scott and I are of one mind. Vegas Vacation. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And had I known you would, you did it. I would have had Maverick on here for sure. I, but I had him. I had that one on for Western on him. I I used it. I used it for something as well, or else it would be on my list too. Love Maverick. <laughs> it was on my list too, guys. This is like we should have done twenty. <laughs> like, we don't even know. I don't think. Does anyone have? Oh, we'll see. Maybe Mike. But does anyone have the gambler? Because like that's a really good movie too. Yeah. Um, and my other honorable mention is The House. Nice. Is this movie yeah, actually good? It. I worked in the movie. No, theater, it's not so. good, but okay. it, it, I saw it in theaters. It made me laugh. It goes on. The list. I remember this poster. <laughs> I managed the movie theater when this was out. This is like high time when, when I was at the theater. And then I would just remember being like, I don't need to see that. I feel like I get the gist of it. <laughs> but, I, wouldn't want, I wouldn't call it a parody of Molly's game, but clearly it's about, you know, them yeah, starting run. a casino in their living room. Yeah, to pay for the college. and grows and grows. Cool. All right, we're at number. Those ones. are honorable mentions. Oh, great! I'll I'll take us home here. My number one, guys. Uh, <laughs> great. That's a lose. Thank you. So my number one. Um, what what else can I say? I mean, I think you guys can probably guess where my number one was going to go. Um, this gentleman has made a few gambling movies. Uh, I've used. He is the number I've used probably the better gambling movie as my number one in the con mo man movies. So I can't yeah. use that one. So, and I used another one of his movies uh, for mentor movies, but I am more than happy for gambling to put uh, the timeless unageable 1961's yeah. the hustler as my, uh, as my number one gambling movie of all time and rewatched it again for this. And it's so ahead of its time, just with the pacing, with the, the character arc. Uh, 1961 could be made today. It looks incredible. Like, we, you know, it's funny. We talked about last night. There's some movies now that are artistically coming black and white for realistically no reason. But I find a lot of the movies that are in black and white at the time help preserve it in a time capsule. Almost, you know what I mean? Like, come on, come on, does not need to be in black and white. It's just doing it to be artistic. That's what I think. Whereas the black and white movies that had to do them as black and white 
are now preserved in this ember and this movie looks like it could come out or even be filmed now and set in 1961 and Paul Newman plays Eddie Felson. He's very young and up and coming um, hustler, you know, pool shark. And he comes into town with his partner at the time and he's masquerading as uh as a salesman and as he gets to Minnesota fats and it's Jackie Gleason, who everyone knows iconic television honeymooners. Um, and this is one of his finest film roles. And for which I, I believe he was nominated for an Oscar. This was nominated for nine Academy Awards. And I think he got a supporting Oscar nom along with George C. Scott as well too. And, uh, and he's incredible in it. it the movie's pretty much bookended by Minnesota fats. You know uh, it's uh, it's about, you know, it, we'll talk about we'll talk about a movie that's very similar in nature to this too. You know, you get you get the big villain, the big bad, and you know he he in the main character flies too close to the sun and has to you know scrape along and and learn humility and you know repairs relationships with lots of people and then ultimately come back and rechallenge and and you know winning in a different way by winning by being a better person. You know, learning a bit about himself as he subsequently pairs up with with Piper Laurie and George C. Scott as well, too. Um, and then they go on their little trek as well, which brings them back to to where they are and ultimately what happens to both of those characters where they end up at the end of the movie, too. But, you know, it's uh, it's a timeless film. It's uh, great themes, great, great hearts, characters and again, great acting performances in it and it shoots the pool incredibly like i think the first i timed the first match with uh minnesota fats is like 18 minutes this is a two and a half, 220 as far as the film but that's the the pool match is like really drawn out really shot really well as well too so uh oh this isn't cool that sucks uh, i didn't change that well enough but uh my number one by far is the hustler from 1961 I saw the color of money like six times before I saw the hustler. I think <laughs> I, I almost had to be told that that was a sequel. That color of money was a sequel to the hustler. I was like, really? So I ran out and bought the hustler. I watched it and I, I like color of money more, but the hustler is solid. Yeah, it's really good. That one says the hustler. <laughs> I used I, the cooler slide, which I cut out of my honorable mention. The hustler. <laughs> I, I wonder when you brought it up, I was like, what? The cooler. But anyway, um, cool. Now, I, yeah, I, I saw The Hustler when I went on, when I was young, like really young, when I went on a Paul Newman kick. Um, I started watching a whole bunch of Paul Newman things. I think it was after I watched Cool Hand Luke and I got obsessed with Cool Hand Luke yeah, that I instantly I went out thing, and started friend. watch out. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's really good. And uh, Jackie Gleason is really good. Is Minnesota Fats like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a classic. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, my number one has already been mentioned by someone in here. Uh, it, vacation, Let's yes, say that. 1974 from Robert Altman. It is California Split. <laughs> great. No, that's great. So, uh, California featuring Split. the same poster. It is. <laughs> it literally is. Uh, no, but like it's very much Mississippi Grind is a a remake homage ripoff of California yeah. Split. Two uh, and, and yeah, and it follows the same things. Uh, what what I will say, what I like California Split more than I like uh, Mississippi Grind is that California Split is funny. I think find funnier. Like where Minnesota Grind uh, is kind of sorry Mississippi Grind, uh, kind of like is like you said, is crazy and wild and goes for it. California Split is kind of like more like a 70s hippie version where they're like shacking up with like at, at the time. Uh, so it stars Elliot Gould and George Seagal who uh, meet at a kind of a Ma and Pa poker game uh, that's set up. And the whole beginning of the, what I think is hilarious, too, is the whole beginning of the um the movie, the first five, 10 minutes of the movie is like a narrator. That's like explaining the rules of gambling because I'd like, I think they like didn't expect the audience members to like know much about gambling. And so like, they, they kind of like give like a, a rundown of the rules and mm -hmm. like how to play and all this stuff as the action is going on. And so uh, Ellie Gould and George Seagal kind of meet each other at this one table um and they don't know each other beforehand but they kind of like seem in cahoots and because of that this guy calls them out for that even though they don't know each other 
And so they both win a bunch of money uh, and they, you know, go out into the parking lot and they're talking, kind of chumming it up. And that guy comes with a bunch of his buddies and kick the shit out of both of them so much so that they're basically in the hospital. And so through that shared experience of them getting robbed and beaten up, uh, they kind of form this bond uh, and they form this friendship. And, um, you know, they go on this little kind of, you know, gambling spree. Uh, and you know, there's they, what I like about it too is they're constantly betting each other over everything. Like they make a George Seagal challenges them. He's like, I'll bet you twenty bucks he can't name all the seven dwarfs. Oh, that's and so when, uh, the bar wasted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so he's like trying to. He's like, I know that there's uh, Smokey, and <laughs> he's like, all starts naming all things. So what I like about it is it has this little like, quirky kind of sense of humor and goofy sense of humor to it. And especially Elliot Gould is like. He's he's hilarious and that and but it also has the you know like you said the uh, every poker movie every a gambling movie has its darker side. You see the darker side is when you know it. Um, there's a couple other instances where they hit rock bottom and they get beat up again and like the you saw the poster there. Uh, like Gould has a broken nose. He has that for a reason. Um, but it it just shows like these two guys that you know met through gambling and they become really great friends uh, and they go on these wild adventures together um and uh ellie gould lives with a couple of prostitutes and they have some like wild adventures with them as well i didn't and understand they... they have a trans friend i didn't understand that whole yeah little... that was, i'm like weird what scene. is the scene and it's, it's like scene. 10 minutes long and i'm like did this man just become a woman is are they training her uh, it... how and i i I did not, and they were giving him a hard time. Are they pretending to be detectives? Yes, yeah. Like, they what kind is of like, like pull Robert a scam Oldman? on him. Yeah, yeah. It, it is it is it's, it's I, that's what I like about it. It's this really quirky and uh, like really goofy at times. And uh, like I said, uh, Elliot Gould is, definitely makes me laugh. I between this, I watched this and the Long Goodbye, which is also Robert Altman, where uh, he plays Philip Marlowe. And uh, between those two, like Elliot Gould, it just 70s Elliot Gould is a like super cool and like cool, like hip, hip and fun and like just kind of wisecracking. Um, he's great and, at the end when he's cashing out chips. Oh, and it, all, that's well, his and, and peak at Elliot Gould acting. What, what's great about that too is that you know, at the end of it, you know, despite it being fun and goofy and all that stuff, uh, there's a somber moment at the end where they've won a ton, a ton of money, they go on tilt and win all a ton a ton of money and um george seagal has this moment of clarity where he you know just has this realization that he can't do this anymore and he's just like i'm going home and like he's got all these winnings in front of him but you can like see that he's just like he's done with it and uh it's it's kind of like a somber end to it like but at the same time, it's like, you know, it shows the two sides of it. You know, you have uh, Elliot Gould, who's going to go continue on to be a degenerate lifetime gambler. And you have George Seagal, who's, you know, seen the highs and lows and decided he wants out. And, you know, the, the, at that point, their paths are going to split. Right. And that's the title. Right. California split. They're going to split. And so I, I really like that ending and that 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 uh, idea that. You know, uh, and, and like that's you know, I, I I've never been a gambler, as these guys can attest. Especially Scott, he always tries to get me to gamble. And I'll never do it. Uh, me and my friends used to play poker constantly, like uh, at the time, and we would never play for anything other than like maybe ten bucks a game or whatever. And we've what the three of us have played in games, and it's it's never for any high anything high stakes, and I've never had an issue. But like. There was a time where I was like caught up in it. Now all I wanted to do was play poker with my buddies, and that's all we ever wanted to do. We we're like, let's go and play poker all every single time, right? And I got caught up in it, and you know that eventually that faded, and it was never a, like a uh, uh, thing of like I want to win a ton of money. It's it, it just got caught up in the exciting excitement of it, and playing, and like the the competition of it, and. Uh, it, I, I think it like you see it here that you know Elliot Gould loves the rush. It's not about the money, and he wants to win money, but it's all about the rush for him. And you know George Segal just you know sees that, and he's like, I can't keep doing this. So 
I think I feel I feel I really felt like George Seagal's character. Like I'm like, this isn't for me. And like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So that's my number one gambling movie, and that's <laughs> yeah, California Split. <laughs> that's great. I'm so yeah. I just again, it's it's good. It's the '70s, and yeah, Mississippi Grind does two things. It takes pretty much ninety percent in the plot of that, and then the one thing I he gets in a fight on a basketball court at the end. Um, Ryan Reynolds and, and he wants to pick a fight because he's trying to overcome. I'm like, well, this is just California split with like the ending of the gambler mixed together. So that does yeah. homage to a lot of seventies, um, you know, gambling films in that regard. But yeah, California splits. Great. I love it too. Okay. <laughs> it's time we've been, it hasn't been an hour yet, but it's certainly going to feel like one after we've finished talking about my number one. The number one, I'm sure. Rounders. Yay. Starring Matt Damon and Edward Norton. And the inspiration for my ensemble today. John <laughs> Johnson. Okay. It's really Teddy, good. Teddy. I will be wearing this every time we go to Uzi's to play poker. <laughs> Very nice. And bring your Oreos too. And bring, oh yeah. The good. Um, of course, that tells the story of Matt Damon as a poker player who uh, loses all of his money to Teddy KGB at the beginning of the movie. I first saw this movie kind of by accident. Uh, I was over at my friend's house and we were watching TMN. I don't remember what we were watching, but when that movie end, Rounder started, and we recognized uh, the actors in it. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan, so I knew Matt Damon from Dogma. And heard about him from Goodwill Hunting, and he was obviously was a talented Mr. Ripley had uh, just come out as well, so he was pretty much a star. Edward Norton was coming off of American History X, which we saw, and uh, Fight Club was after, but we had seen that before prior to Rounder, so we mm -hmm. like okay, we know the, these guys, let's check this out, and fell in love. Mm -hmm. I mean, right after that, we were calling our buddies like we we've discovered this new way to play poker. Let's get together. And we would play uh, for candy at that point. It wasn't for a few more a few years later when a couple of us would get jobs that we actually play for money. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but yeah, Matt Damon loses $30,000 on a hand of poker against John Malkovich. He decides he's going to give it up. Well, I don't know if he decides, but his girlfriend certainly insinuates that you are done playing poker now. Um. He gets a job uh, driving a delivery truck, and he is a law student. Uh, Edward Norton is his childhood friend. He's getting out of jail, and he is a car cheat or a mechanic, as they say in the world of underground poker. <clears throat> and he would do anything for him. Um, he hooks him up with uh, uh, when when they get it, when he gets out. He right away says, "I know where there's a card game. Let's go play." Damon's like, nah, I'm out. But uh, turns around and comes back and plays, and he gets the bug again. He, uh, when he gets home and his girlfriend accuses him about playing poker, and he talked about she, she brings up how role. you lost yeah. all of your money before. It's like, and he and he says to her, I couldn't lose. It was like playing wiffle ball. It's like <laughs> you can lose. I've seen you lose everything. The uh, drama between him and his girlfriend in the movie is almost tacked on. Yeah, kind of neat. Like it kind of lame. It, it it's lame but uh almost necessary for a movie like that There's well just, it kind of has... make kind of has some stakes into like him deciding not to do it yeah right and do i want to play poker or do i want to live with, with you girl for the rest of my life and he yeah. I, I mean after he plays that one game he comes home one day and discovers she's gone yeah. so and then him and edward norton have the great scene and edward norton Talked mm. about how women are the rake, right. and he talked about uh, <laughs> <laughs> who says that. <laughs> no, and uh, says, you know what makes me happy? Taking money off tourists in Atlantic City, and Matt Damon's like, let's go play some cards, and they go off and I just cards. into their old ways. Um, throughout the movie, it's discovered uh, Edward Norton has owes money to just about everybody, and one of the uh, local enforcers has collected all of his debt and he says now you owe me money mm -hmm. he brings us up to uh uh mike mcd mike mcdermott played by matt damon and uh they decide 
um, okay, let's go around town and play these games. And Edward Norton is like, yes, let's go. We can, because he's a compulsive, not to say comp- compulsive gambler, he's a compulsive cheater. Yeah. There is no game that he can't find an edge to and uh, wants to exploit it. And Damon says, no, nope, we got to play these straight until they have their their game against the muni- mun- municipal workers of Binghamton, which are actually state police uh, troopers. Yeah. <laughs> they get into that game. Uh, Matt Damon cab. starts off, and then Edward Norton walks in and goes right into his old tricks of dealing from the bottom of the deck. They get found out and get beaten up. Uh, and and that's where they have their split, and you don't see Edward Norton for the rest of the movie because he's, he says, we got it. I owe this money to Teddy KGB, and uh, Damon says, no, I gotta, I'll got i go settle it as best I can, and Edward Norton runs, essentially. He uh, gets the money from his law professor, played by Martin Landau. Ten, he gets uh, 10000 bucks. He goes to Teddy KGB's place, says, I, need a, I want a game. He wins what he owes, and begins to walk out and Teddy has the amazing scenes. Like it's a joke. Anyway, I'm paying you with your money. Yeah. yeah, 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 your yeah. Money. I'm still up 20 grand from the last time I stick it in you. Amazing. Malkovich performance. He's in the movie for what? It, like 10, it, maybe 10 minutes. His, his accent is super suspect, but it's, it, it's, it's a character. Like there's, it's, a great yeah, story the character. The there's a great story behind the accent on set. There was a Russian woman there yeah. and she would say his lines and then he would just repeat what she said. Right. In that accent. Um, it is over the top, but it's fantastic. He's, of course he definitely uh, owns this movie sure. in a movie filled with poker and great lines about poker and gambling. His, his lines top the list of, the ones that get quoted the most. Of course. Damon wins his money back, his $30,000, and he is off to the World Series of Poker. And uh, that's how the movie ends. Rounders, my number one. So, full disclosure, Rounders was my number two. And then I we obviously found and out then that you uh, dropped it, it was your number one. Yeah, so I dropped it uh, right out into my honorable mentions so that Matt could have, have Rounders it. Rounders was off my list clean because I knew it was going to be his number one. Rounders, uh, Rounders was a movie that we watched. I talked about playing poker with my buddies. Uh, the Rounders was a movie that we watched constantly like constantly all the time we quoted constantly we all had oreos at the table the card tables constantly uh and uh, the only thing i'm going to add on to it is uh uh john totoro uh plays kanish um he's to me is kind of the unsung hero in this usually john totoro when he comes in he's playing an over-the-top extravagant character in a lot of his movies uh, I'm thinking like the Jesus, the and, Jesus and and Big Lebowski and that kind of stuff, and even his stuff in the Spike Lee movies. He's playing like a you know wild characters. Here he's playing it straight. He's the straight guy who's grinding it out, and he's really Matt Damon's true friend. And he goes to him, and he's got a really great role here, and he has a lot of great scenes. He has a gr- the scene in the spa. <laughs> Uh, with him and Matt Damon, where he basically tells them, "No, we won't lend them the money." It's and talk about Johnny Chan. It, yeah, and that yeah, whole scene is tells him why my favorite. Least, yeah, yeah, that's my favorite scene in the movie uh, because he he basically is being a true friend to my uh, Mikey McD, uh, saying, you know, like I'm not going to let you destroy your life again. You know, I want to look out for you, and so I. You know, you know, I, I grow years ago when I was younger. Obviously, the Malkovich scenes are own this movie, like he's fantastic. But as I got older, you know, the Kanish scenes really stand out to me now because you know, it shows you know, when the when when shit hit the fan, uh, Worm was out the door and t- yeah. t- it bailed on him and left him there, even though you know, like Mike McDeed stood up for him, bailed him out time and time again. Uh, Worm pieced out on him. Kanish was the guy who stood by him and was given, being the true friend to him. So, like, I, I really love the Chan Totoro role in this movie more and more every time I see it now. Uh, was, so, I just uh, wanted to give a special shout out for him. No, for Chan sure. Totoro. I was watching the Blu ray and I was uh, one of the commentaries on there has uh, professional poker players uh, talking about the movie. And John Totoro in that opening scene sees uh, Damon with his three stacks of high society and he tells them let you don't have to play that let's get out of here yeah. and all of the all of the guys on the commentary were like listen to him yeah <laughs> you yeah. don't 
drop your whole bankroll on one game yeah. ever. Well, because and that's the thing with poker, and then like it comes up in all, all these movies, right? Is that even when you ha- even when you have the uh, what you think is the best hand, there's always one that's more impossible than yours, unless you have you know the highest royal flush. You never know what's going to happen, right? And that's the thing about gambling in itself, right? Is always the unknown, and you can read people as much as you want to. But it all comes down to the cards and like you, when you're throwing it all away on one handed rather than grinding it out like Kanish, right? You're bound uh, to get burned. Uh, rounders is one of the uh, reasons why p- poker is be well, specifically Texas Hold'em has become so popular. Hundred percent as it uh, as it has. This movie it, came it out dropped it dropped at, at the perfect time. Like yeah, it, it came it out ninety. It dropped on like Texas Hold'em like uh central right when it was exploding and just further that and then uh chris moneymaker who was a home game player won his seat in the world series playing online and took the uh, world series main event in 2002 and espn showing the games with the uh the advent of the of the audience being or the people at home being able to see uh the whole cards underneath underneath the cards which is when when that first started dropping i was like this is amazing like yeah. that to have that thing where you could like know and you could at that point it is like like me and my friends started to, to learn about like the tells right and watching guys and watching you know like how guys bluff and all the like the tricks of the trade and we start dissecting the game and like it all you're right it stems back from watching rounders and like other movies like it that you know got the bug in us and uh it's very effective i used to be pretty good not um, pretty good is hard to say i mean amongst my friends at home games i was usually winning or second place and and most home games second place leaves with the 10 bucks they put in yeah so very my... often broke even at uh home games uh, like they say in rounders, you never uh, reveal that you know your friends tell or know your other players tells. Uh, I knew all my friends tells, and because <laughs> uh, we played so much together, but I never told them that, and so I would win a lot uh, when we played. But then I would go play with other people, and I didn't know their tells, so <laughs> I got cocky and would lose. But uh, when I played with my friends, uh, I'd win a lot because I we played a lot, so it's just all about knowing knowing how the other guy plays, right? I played at the casino, not often, but a couple of times. And uh, uh, my buddy, Scal, he w- well, he lives in Alberta now, but uh, when he comes into town, he- we try to find a tournament. I think it's like a $60 buy-in. And we play. And I don't. We never won anything like uh, a tournament like that. Too. But uh, <clears throat> we would go and play uh, games or cash games. When one time I actually pulled in a pretty big pot and I was like, okay, I'm out. Said good, said thanks to the dealer, said thanks to everybody else. And the guy, not next to me, I think he was two seats over. He was like, where do you think you're going? I got one. Bye. Cause I took all of his money, not all of his money, but enough that I was just like, all right, I'm ahead. See it. Yep. And that's how you got to do it, man. Take the money and run. Yeah. Cool. Scott. Is this your favorite movie as well? It, uh, yeah, no, no, I'm, uh, of course. This movie dropped at the same time. I would have put it on my list too. And it's uh, Bill Simmons had it on sports list. They did a sports podcast the other day, and he put it on one of his best sports movies of all time. And you can't argue with that. It's great. And they talk about that. Uh, this movie's dynamite. It got they, and Damon right off, right off follows up, follows up. Will Hunting can do anything he wants. Does Spielberg Saving Private Ryan in this? That's an incredible one to yeah. follow yeah. it up with. Like, that's like classic leading man stuff. Like, we saw Newman do it and McQueen do it, and now he does. And him and Norton, they were like, Norton was just off an Oscar nom, like, and follows it with this. So, no yeah. doubt, this movie is incredible. And it, like I said, it's the great uh, story, great, you know, there's at least a dozen memorable characters in it. Um, this the mob guys as well, too. There's some great, like throughout the film, memorable scenes. Femke and it's Jansen, like, I was just gonna say, we have not, off, we have not, before we started, we talked about Femke, Jansen, yeah, yeah, so we do. I was just gonna uh, say, she has to get the shout out Femke. on we air, talk about Femke and how amazing she looks. 
this was like like peak uh, Famke Jensen too, like right when time like got X Men and all the rest X-Men of that stuff. Been next, yeah, next and point. so like it, it's the thing. This this spread uh, this this series of movies for Famke was like all my friends were obsessed with her, including me. Like so, yeah, this definitely helped in that uh, regard. Yeah, and then uh, no doubt, and then I was just looking here. Grandma Michael Ruspoli is grandma. He's great. There's so yeah. There's at least a dozen good people throughout this. So yeah, the movie's fantastic. I knew it'd be your one. I'm glad it is. So definitely. So with that, we are going to end the show. How you guys feel after all of that? I'm actually very shocked that Uncut Gems was not on on this guy's Ooh, list. Oh yeah, we'll talk I'm about that. Shocked. I know. I'm it was shocked. Right there, man. I'm shocked. I, I did not put it. I did not put it on my list because I assumed it was going to be on. Your I list. felt that that was a lock as an honorable mention, and it was. The cooler and that were my honorable mentions, and then I'm like, well, two for the money. I got to put on, and then I'm like, do I do two sports gambling? Sure, and then my whole list was. All within the last like five, ten years. Sure. And I'm just like, ah, oh, I need to put so that's why I put Vegas vacation. I know. I'm good. I was, I was like waiting right for there. I was waiting for it and it would have made my would have probably this is how I my, win. my on, honorable mentions. Yeah. There's yeah. twenty. I could do twenty. There's so many that I left <laughs> off. Um, so with that, everybody watching, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell us your top five in the comments below. Um, with that. For AB, Scott, myself, we'll see everybody next time.